Okay, Dennis, so we've done already our, uh, you know, um, the interview portion of the course. We've, we've talked about patient interview, asking the right questions, getting the right information out of the patient. It's time now to um, find out more about the manifestation of these uh, symptoms that the patient basically talked about during the interview by doing a clinical evaluation. Mm -hmm. The patient interview was the first three steps of the, the diagnostic process. Now from uh, steps four to seven to the end, we're doing our clinical evaluation, which always starts with the extra oral examination. Okay. And the reason it does that is because you're always trying to have a, also a systematic approach on each step of the process. So, so, what, so what do we look for? So externally, what we're going to do, uh, you know, we're going to start the examination by taking a look at the neck and then the face and the, the head, if you will. Before we even look at the patient's head and neck, I think part of the extraoral exam starts by, you know, the, the assistance description of how the patient walked in from the waiting room to the, to the chair, right? Because okay. it is, you know, it, it tells you a lot that but the patient's body language, posture, everything tells you a whole lot of information before you even get to ask the first question uh, about what kind of state of mind they're in, what kind of state of health they're in. All of these things are just body language communications that are also very important. And you could consider these, if you will, part of the extra oral examination. Okay. But beyond that part of the logical thing, you know, when it gets down to the actual head and neck, we start from the neck and we try to first and foremost look at the, any potential lymphadenopathy along the cervical uh, area, along the sternocleidomastoid, the cervical uh, ganglion, so on. We'll check those, um, the lymph nodes in the area, we'll check those out to make sure there is no pathology or any lymphadenopathy in that area. Also, it's important to check the uh, patient's uh, flexibility and posture and the ability to move and have mobility in their neck. Some patients could be having uh, cervical problems. Some of the cervical problems could actually, through some of the accessory nerves, refer upwards. And patients that have a history of cervical problems could be potentially having uh, symptoms that could uh, uh, be misinterpreted by them again as pain in the neck and uh, head and neck area, TMJ area, and also uh, by referral into the oral cavity area. So we just have to be aware of that. And the, the process of doing our examinations always starts by doing a visual examination and then moves on to doing some palpation testing and so on. We're looking for symmetry, discoloration, any uh, signs of swelling in the area, any, you know, any changes in the skin characters, whether there is any petechia, any ecchymosis, any kind of staining or, uh, you know, take a look at the eyes. The sclera makes, you know, just tells you a little bit about the, the systematic health that they have. Uh, you look at the nasal labial fold and also, most importantly, the, the fascial spaces that could potentially be the source of, um, not the source, but a place where the infection could drain into. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the key and significant thing about fascial spaces, Dennis, is really the understanding of muscle attachments in the head and neck. Because fascial spaces are those spaces that are present among fascia uh, that encircle and kind of wrap muscles. And these spaces are normally collapsed, but because of the uh, concept of infection following the path of least resistance, infection, instead of going inside the muscle, will end up being into these fascial spaces between muscles. Uh -huh. And then as the swelling expands, which is the reaction of the back, uh, our own immune system to the bacteria, you'll get distension of these fascial spaces, so they enlarge, and they can actually get filled up with fluid as well, uh, and edema, as well as the infection, which is the original source. And the problem is that the infection can spread along these fascial spaces. So understanding muscle attachments is very helpful. For example, if you have, as we talked about, if the uh, nasolabial fold is um, kind of uh, is no longer present, it could you know, potentially indicate an infection in the canine fossa fascial space. Um, so these are all important things to kind of consider during your extra oral examination. Uh, and take a look, you, you have to take a look at also the salivary glands in the area. Make sure your parotid gland is, is, in, is in good shape. You're not having any kind of masses in that area. Check out all the lymph nodes underneath the neck, the submandibular uh, lymph nodes and so on. And uh, also, um, it terminates, I think, pretty much by having the patient open and close so that you can check the muscles of mastication. Mm -hmm. um, again, the importance of the temporomandibular uh, health of a patient in terms of um, their, you know, as it relates to their chief complaint is an important thing to establish. Uh, opening and closing, maybe a little bit of auscultation listening to the TMJ would be helpful in cases where you do uh, obviously um, 
suspect uh, a, a TMD component to the pain. So this basically is the um, extraoral um, examination uh, that, that, as it relates to our endodontic diagnosis of patients who come and see us so for how endodontics. Long, how long typically would this extra oral exam take for your average patient? What, I mean, just give it some context in terms of it. Is this a, a, a two-minute thing, a five-minute thing, a 10-minute thing? And I'm just saying it yeah. typically, not Well, certainly not a 10-minute thing. There's okay. just not enough time to do that kind okay. of extra oral so examination. Give, just give just the, our docs it, it is basically as it. needed. You would do a very quick uh, visual examination, run the, uh, the neck test, and do a quick opening and closing. And the rest of it is just very quick palpation. I think that the whole thing should take first less than a minute. However, uh, based on need, if you have fascial space uh, engagement, if you have okay. uh, lymphadenopathy, then you will investigate more. Okay. But it's really literally less than a minute before you can move on to the next step, which is, which is a great segue for our next lesson, yeah. which would be the uh, uh, intraoral examination. So let's come back and take a look at the intraoral examination. Okay.